Redditors who salvaged their marriage from the brink of divorce. What's your story and how's it going now? Story one. The man played wow. Many. We had two children. I was miserable and controlling. I went to therapy for myself and got some emotional tools to deal with life. It was heartbreaking. I also learned not to let fear dictate my decisions. The man noticed. Essentially, I went from reserved, nagging, and whining to being calm, independent, and somehow less caring. He was nervous and agreed to go to therapy. He attended two sessions. In fact, his view of reality was questioned. I swear our therapist looked like the evil Hannibal Lecter. He was good at getting to the heart of things, but both my husband and I were desperate for change. My husband came, and I gave up trying to micromanage his life. Life is beautiful. Story 2. I caught my wife chatting with someone else online. When I called her, she said she knew I was talking to someone else too. We, emotionally, cheated on each other because we felt we weren't getting what we needed out of our marriage. We realized that if we just took the effort we were spending on other people and spend it on each other, we would be happy and get what we needed. Now our marriage is truly wonderful. Story 3. I had an operation. I know it sounds strange. I am a woman, earn the most money, work the most, etc. My husband also works but has very few skills and smokes candy a lot because of his back pain. So every time he really gets an interview for something better, they test candy and he doesn't get the job. We also have a son with autism. We will not have any more children. When my son turned eight, I got tubes so I couldn't. Every day is exhausting and to be honest, none of us were happy. I never wanted intimacy because I was tired. He wanted it all the time. He snapped about everything. I shut up about everything. We had been together for 10 years and I knew I wanted a divorce. I had a ball shrunk due to pain issues that were affecting my work. This operation is a serious matter. I was ready to recover without help. I was daydreaming. I was a mess after that. I didn't want to ask him for help at all. He turned into a different person. He helped me in the bathroom, took me in the shower to help me, drove me to all my appointments, cooked me meals, checked on me every 20 minutes. He never lost patience with me. Four weeks after surgery, I felt really great. I was in a good mood. I liked how I looked in the mirror. I asked him if he liked the way I looked. He looked like a dog staring at a treat. I told him I wanted a close relationship. Since then, everything has changed. I don't know exactly what happened. Maybe he realized that paying attention to me was important and caring, and I realized that I needed to let go of control. Now we do a little date. We have intimate relationships one, two times a week. It used to be about once a month. We laugh with each other. I talk to him when I'm frustrated instead of trying to figure things out on my own, but it is very cool. Story 4. Go back 17 years. We had a little son. He was the child of my dream. I lost focus on my husband and completely focused on my son. My husband never talked much. I am also very tired. All I wanted to do after 9, 10 hours of work was sleep. He had a job he hated and also works 10 hours a day. We forgot to be in love. Point. I nagged a lot and he just ignored me. I caught him telling our problems to a stranger on the internet. I asked for a divorce. It was around January. I said that we will let my son finish the school year and I will leave in June. After that, we coexisted as friends. We were together for 16 years, so it wasn't difficult. Our parents knew we were breaking up, but they didn't understand because we were such good friends. Around March, we were bored. We wanted to go to dinner and a movie. I asked my mother to babysit. It was just as friends. I really took the time to prepare. He too. We went to dinner and then to the movies. Out of habit, I just grabbed his hand. He never said anything, just stroked the back of my hand and wouldn't let go. We got back in the car. It was already late, so we left our son to sleep. I don't know what happened that night, but I felt something I had never felt before. I held on to my best friend and I wasn't going to let him go. We went home and just hugged each other. They didn't mention the divorce anymore. In my own head, I realized that I had to put him first. He needed me too. I balanced my time, and he learned to give me the confidence that I needed to feel loved. Now, as I watch him sleep, and with a seven-year-old between us, I know our marriage is as perfect as it can be. We both forgave and accepted each other's faults. My advice to you, one, arrange one date a month. Make it special. Two, every three, four months. Plan to leave the city for an overnight stay. Act like teenagers. I can't tell you how much I need these nights. We go to concerts, ball games, casinos, or even just on a hike. Five, don't argue about things that won't matter a month from now. If he didn't take out the trash, would it really matter? 
4. Learn to enjoy each other's bodies. I gained weight and lost all self-esteem. When I realized that he was not looking for perfection, but only for attention, everything changed. I wasn't happy with how I looked and slowly got better. My son is getting married. His future wife told him that he wanted to get married just like his parents. He told me everything I needed to know. We did it. Story 5. It will be a long time for you. I struggle with physical attachment. I am very affectionate with my words, but it was not enough for my husband. It was not the reason, but the instigator. My husband has bipolar disorder depression with compartmentalization syndrome. For a very long time, he refused to admit that he needed help. We had a lot of ups and downs early in our marriage, but we always tried. Finally, he had a complete breakdown and ended up in a mental hospital. When he came out, everything was incredible. He was cured of most of his ailments except depression. He lost his job. I was the only one working and he was at home with our son doing nothing. He found a woman on the internet. I found out and he told me he didn't love me anymore. I didn't kick him out. He had nowhere to go, no job, no money, and we had a baby, and he needed to be in his life. I had him move into our guest room, and I live in a state where the courts are not separate, so we made our own deal. Obviously, the online thing didn't go anywhere, and I flat out told him no dating, online or IRL, until he moved. I wasn't going to pay for him to spin on my dollars. We treated each other like roommates. Then, July 2016, we found a mass on my ovary. Maybe it was cancer. It is not, thank God. But fear made me understand a lot about myself, how I did not treat him as the love of my life, how to be gentle isn't just about intimacy, and I could do more than just say, I love you. Fright also pushed him to transfer. He worked harder with his therapist, realized he loved me, and it was his untreated depression that was a huge cloud over his emotions. So we started slow, dating again from the beginning. After two years, everything is great. I'm much gentler. He talks a lot more about what's going on in his head, and we're still dating. Story 6. Long story short. I had a bad upbringing that made me a poor young man with no idea how to be a good partner. For years, I didn't live up to even 10% of the wife my husband deserved. After a really bad fight one weekend about six years later, he was done. My devastation was all-encompassing. I lay in bed for two days, sobbing and wanting to die. He decided he wanted to keep trying, and when he told me, I fell to my knees, sobbing. I don't deserve him, but I fight every day to be the best wife I can be. In the one, five years since then, things have gotten better. I've gotten treatment for my depression and gotten serious about taking responsibility for what I've done wrong in our marriage, and I plan fun and interesting dates for us at least a few times a month. We worked on the friendship part of our relationship, and it was a game changer. So all in all, I'm optimistic but still feel a lot of guilt for not treating him the way he deserved for so long. Story 7. We had two children in diapers, and we worked opposite schedules so we could take care of them without going to daycare. He called me at work to say we were both unhappy. We should break up, and without any emotional tears or anything. I said I wasn't going to quit doing it alone, so stop yourself. Then I'm calling heaven. Tomorrow is my 30th birthday. The kids are grown and successful and we love each other more than ever. Story 8. My wife and I got married quite quickly. Neither of us had a great upbringing. We really had no idea what a healthy relationship should look like. We have both had abusive relationships in the past. I couldn't communicate my feelings effectively to her. She always thought that one should prepare for the worst. So, when we argued, I shut down. She turned to her ex-boyfriends for comfort. I found out that she had been in contact with other men several times. Last time I had enough. I told her I wanted a divorce. She asked me to go with her to the consultation. The first session was a train wreck. I almost left her that night and she thought we wouldn't make it. After several sessions and very difficult conversations, we learned to communicate. I learned to open up. She learned that her behavior was destructive. It was definitely not easy to overcome and I would say it is a miracle that we are still together. I'm so glad we did. Story 9. Warning. This is long. Married for almost 10 years. Almost lost my marriage twice due to my instability and crazy mood swing. About 7, 1, 2 years ago, I was between mania and depression. My husband was stressed dealing with me. A bad church situation as a preacher and two jobs. We were stressed and we were so close to just giving up. We were roommates for a few months. Then he got a job opportunity in another state which took the stress off him, 
and my mood improved. We thought everything was fine. I was controlling my mood as best I could without a diagnosis. Five years ago, a new state. I was working. He was working. We hardly saw each other. My mood and health started to deteriorate again. I took it out on him, distancing myself, staying with my family and just being a witch. We probably broke up again within a few weeks, and I was advised to go to the doctor, get checked out, and then see a therapist. I saw a doctor, was diagnosed with bipolar 1 disorder, started taking medication, and seeing a therapist. I also dealt with seizures of unknown origin, and when I was diagnosed and started therapy, I got advice on how to control my mood swings, started medication, and rebuilt our marriage. A month after starting all the meds, I got my seizures under control. They are stress-induced. I am still on meds for it. I found out I was pregnant after being diagnosed with infertility. My husband and I focused on rebuilding our relationship, being husband and wife, and becoming parents. It took a lot of hard work on both parts, and a ton of soul-searching. But we did it. We met and got married after four months of dating, so it was difficult for us, especially since he is nine years older than me. I was 20 when we got married, and he was 30, so it was immaturity on my part and growing as a person and dealing with chronic illness, and now mental illness changed me, and we both needed to admit this, and realizing that it changed our marriage to almost break up twice. We are stronger than ever, and it's amazing how far we've come in almost 10 years of marriage. We did it, and we are working together. He's my accountability partner, making sure my meds are taken every day, checking in on me after appointments, having a great look back at how much we almost quit. Story 10. When we got married, we were virgins. We saved half for the wedding. My wife was in pain on our honeymoon because of my above-average size. She didn't tell me. She seemed to enjoy our close relationship during the honeymoon. This pain forced his wife to completely give up intimate relationships for several months. After a year of marriage, we had 11 relations. My wife would never talk about our intimate life. I tried to figure out what was wrong, but she kept saying everything was fine and she didn't want intimacy unless she was in the mood. She also wouldn't let me do anything to arouse her. We were intimate about once a month. This went on for years. We had children, and during the pregnancy, we did not have a close relationship at all. After the pregnancy, we rarely had intimate relationships. For several years, we had a close relationship three times. I kept waiting because our children were young. I hoped that when the children grew up, our intimate life would improve. After 10 years of our marriage, I decided that something had to change. We had a big conversation, and during that conversation, my wife explained that during our honeymoon, intimacy was painful, and because of that, she didn't want intimacy or anything that would lead to intimacy. He does not hold any hands, no kisses, no hugs. I was hungry for physical love. I asked if she felt any pain or discomfort now that we were intimate, and she said no, but she was still worried. After that, the frequency of conversations increased and then returned to once a month. I read everything I could find to try to improve our intimate life. Nothing I tried worked. My wife complained that I was too stressed. I hired a mate. We went on a wonderful tropical vacation. I went without on vacation. I took on a lot of household chores even though I was working full time. The wife worked part time. She worked 16 hours a week. Nothing I tried worked. We went on a date. I sent flowers. I wrote her cards and notes. Over the years, I tried everything I could find. Later, our children became independent and drove a car. They didn't really need us. I thought there was hope that our intimate life would improve. We continued to rest and date with no improvement. We went to a marriage counselor hoping they would help us. We learned to communicate better. We learned some skills to better talk about intimate relationships. After the counselor released us, she told my wife that if she couldn't improve our intimate relationship, she should give me an amicable divorce. Soon after the sessions ended, our intimate relationship went back to once a month. I was miserable. My love language is physical touch. My wife never touched me and our kisses were quick pecks. For the first time, I began to think about divorce. We were married for about two decades. We never had a good close relationship. Our children were adults and independent. It's time for a change. I made plans. Financially, we were well off and a divorce wouldn't be bad for either of us. I would give my wife half of everything in our house. I would move to the apartment next door. I was hoping we could still be friends. I still loved her more than anything. My wife saw my distance and asked if I wanted a divorce. We talked for a long time and discussed divorce. I would leave after Christmas in a month. 
A few weeks later, my wife started having every night. At first, it seemed like a close relationship out of obligation. But within a few weeks, the close relationship became filled with passion. Very frequent intimacy seemed to increase my wife's libido. She made a 180-degree change. Our restoration took place about five years ago. We continue to maintain a close relationship. Since Thursday, we have had intimate relations five times. The life of our close relationships is alive and bright. Story 11. I Will Bite Marriage was a cow show. We were both still immature in many ways. Things went badly. There were lies, fights, shouts, verbal and psychological insults. Divorce was used as a threat, as was custody of our children. The husband had an emotional affair with his ex-wife. We reached a tipping point where during an argument I was told that my opinion was wrong and I needed to change it or leave within a week. I left the next day. We quarreled more. Both filed for divorce. We had one session where we talked about guardianship with the judge. Time passed. My attorney had everything ready to go, and all that was needed was my signature. I decided not to submit it or sign it. During the three years of separation, we continued to talk on the phone. I let him see our kids as much as possible. We were separated by hundreds of miles, a 12-hour drive. My car wouldn't start. His condition was better. He may have been a cow, but he was always a good dad. We talked, talked. We both sought treatment individually. We grew up. Eventually, he came back and I came back. We continued to work on our marriage, so we never got to where we were. As for right now, all right, we are not perfect people, but we manage. Story 12. I shared my story on R Off My Chest a few days ago, but I feel it's worth sharing here as well. I'm 34M, married to a 33F. Long story short, I've been a heavy drinker for 15 plus years. He verbally abused my wife in a drunken state. My wife lost her father to cancer the same year we got married. The following year, she lost her mother to an unknown cause, possibly a heart problem. We had a child. In June 2016, my wife's sister gave birth, and a week later, my sister died unexpectedly. I started drinking more and increased the verbal abuse. My wife suppressed her feelings and said she was, now, used to death. At the end of August 2016, she says that she wants to end the marriage. I didn't want to break. In early September 2016, I decided to quit drinking cold turkey, averaging 15 drinks a day to zero, and start working out. A week later, I found out that she was having an affair. The affair lasted for six months, but I kept my sobriety and all the time tried to convince her that I had changed. She never believed me and expected me to go back to my old self. In December 2016, we were going to divorce. February 2017. The affair ended a month ago. She has gone through a lot of therapy at this point. She started going weekly in November 2016. And we decided to try and give our marriage another go. We had weekly marriage counseling and got to know the new U.S., individually and as a couple. That April, I went back to school after a 10-year hiatus. Today, 9-27-18, I'm down to 170 pounds from 220. This weight was actually lost in the first couple of months after I found out about the affair. I'm 80% done with my bachelor's degree. My wife and I are more in love than ever, since we met, and we are expecting a second child in a week. I am still sober without help. I did it silently, and I am not proud of myself. Two years ago at this time, I wouldn't have believed this was possible, but I pushed through and am finally making the right decisions. I was a banana and didn't deserve a beautiful woman who put up with my daily drinking and verbal abuse for over five years. She shouldn't have cheated, and maybe some people think I should have an affair, but I made my choice and I'm sticking to it. I love her. My wife and I have finally found our true selves, and our marriage is stronger than ever. We were both wrong for different reasons, but we worked hard and made amends as best we could. I just wanted to get it off my mind because I feel accomplished. I am finally happy with my life, and where it is going for the first time since my youth. Keep your head up. Most of the in-life is just a phase unless you make it bigger than it needs to be. To be focused. Story 13. Over the course of 20 years, the relationship became more and more emotionally abusive, something I didn't recognize until I saw a psychologist. She helped me and also suggested that my husband was suffering from depression. A very serious ultimatum got him into psychiatric help, but it took several years to find the right doctor put him on the right medication, and for us both to understand our roles in the broken relationship we were in and learn to communicate effectively. After seven or eight years, I can honestly say that we are happy together. 
I would never advise anyone to stay in an abusive relationship. But if you really can't break up, at least get professional help. Story 14. Words by Stephen R. Covey from the book The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. It changed my paradigm about my marriage. It's just that my wife and I don't feel the same feelings for each other that we had before. I guess I just don't love her anymore and she doesn't love me. What can I do? No more feelings? I asked. That's right, he confirmed. We have three children that we are very worried about. What do you suggest? Love her, I replied. I told you that there are no more feelings. I love her. You do not understand. There is simply no feeling of love. Then love her. If the feeling isn't there, that's a good reason to love her. But how do you love when you don't love? My friend, love is a verb. Love, a feeling, is the fruit of love, a verb. So love her. Give it to her. Sacrifice. Listen to her. Empathize. I appreciate. Confirm it. Are you ready to do it? Story 15. My wife and I divorced completely and remarried after year after year of separation. We had the same problems. She thought I was controlling like I was with her. After our daughter was born, she had postpartum depression, which manifested itself as a super nasty person to me and insane perfectionism. I didn't have the tools to deal with it, so I turned her off and it got out of hand. After a year apart, we both realized that each person contributed to each other's lives and we talked about it. It's too much to type, but we both had a lot of work to do. We do much better. Story 16. We had some problems. Truth be told, they weren't even that big, but we had no idea how to work with them. She is from a past very abusive relationship, and I am from a past relationship that cheated and abandoned the family. Obviously, we both loved each other more than anything, but we were incredibly unhappy. When we tried to talk, it turned into fights and fixing each other. Endless fights that didn't lead to anything turned into just ignoring the problems and we just avoided each other. One day I woke up to go to the kitchen and she was packing her things to leave and she started filing for divorce. I was devastated and it made me realize that we were breaking up over such little things. I refused to let it go and she finally agreed to try again because we read this book together. I hate therapy. My therapist cheated on me in the past. And self-help books but I've been desperately trying to work this out. So I agreed to both. I attribute our reconciliation 100%, apart from our efforts, to this book. It completely opened my eyes to why this was happening and how we were supposed to communicate. I buy it for every newlywed couple I know. One book each. Scientific support, not opinion, helped me to believe. Full of collaborative workbooks. We went through chapter by chapter, talked and did exercises together, and we learned so much about each other even after living together for over 10 years. It really saved us and we know how to communicate. And more importantly, we know the warning signs of what makes a relationship unhealthy. I strongly encourage everyone to read it. Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work by John M. Gottman, Ph.D. Story 17. I don't know if we are very far from the edge, but a very long story, and unfortunately familiar to many. In short, he was a sneaky drunkard. He hid his drunkenness and depravity from me. He went to rehab. I took him there. It was voluntary on his part, but one of the most hellish trips of my life. Sometimes I remind myself that it is my choice to stay married to him, to overcome my resentment, anger, and legitimate distrust. I may or may not. What do I want to choose? He knows that I am making this active choice. He decides not to drink alcohol, to work on himself, to do everything that helps him stay sober. It's his choice. Knowing that this is a choice for me is liberating. I have seen what it looks like when my husband is gone. When I am raising our child on one income alone, I've seen it, I've done it. I know it's not the end of the world. If I choose this path, I will be fine. So for now, I've decided to work hard on myself, to acknowledge and own the pain, anger, and resentment, and work on it. Because even if we don't get married at the end of the day, I don't want that cow hanging over my head. Or him. None of us deserve this. Day by day, flip through the day. Story 18. Warning, really long story. I made that cliche movie where my husband comes home from work to find his wife, me, sitting at the kitchen table with a drink, gesturing to another chair like, sit down, we need to talk. I basically laid out everything that was wrong with our relationship and family life, and there was a lot of it. I've thought about all of this a lot for literal years. I'd been married for nine years at that point. But apparently the communication had gotten so bad that I hadn't mentioned it before. He took it very calmly and said, It can be fixed. 
I'll fix it. I remained silent and looked down. He said, if you don't want it fixed, are you telling me you want a separation? I wanted a breakup, but I couldn't bring myself to tell him. This conversation didn't go the way I expected. I thought he would take the opportunity to leave me. I thought he hated me. So I said, well, no. And we talked a little more, made plans to improve our relationship. A few days after that, we had dinner and I was too distracted by our bad marriage to have a good time. He noticed and asked what was wrong. I said, you expect things to get better right away. There is nothing better. I feel the same way. After a bit of back and forth, we got the check and ran home. We live a short walk from the restaurant we were at, so we went home angrily. I guess it was comical for the people watching. Everything, everything came out that night. All the ways he hurt me ten years ago that he never apologized for or acknowledged until now. He said, why now? Why are you telling me this now? What has changed? Did my longtime friend turn you against me for some reason? And the truth came out. I said I met someone else. It's true, I met someone else, and it was mostly an emotional affair. Although we exchanged photos and talked by... But what struck me was how differently they both treated me. In short, it was like day and night. In much simpler terms, the other guy respected my time and made me feel like I had value as a person without making him happy, while my husband didn't make me feel that way. I didn't want to tell my husband about this affair. The other guy and I weren't going to get together and were actually starting to end our relationship, so telling my husband about it would just be pointless and hurtful. I told him mainly to clear my poor friend's name, he really thought she was trying to get me to break up with him, and put the nail in the coffin of our relationship so I could just get on with it. It was actually the turning point of the evening. He told me that it was not consistent with who he knew me to be. A good, honest, faithful person. He said that I must have felt cornered into committing infidelity. And it actually made him sit up and take stock of how he had been behaving for the past ten years. As for how he behaved, he was a workaholic who literally had no time for family life, including fun and interesting conversations about things not related to work. He never came to visit my family with me, hardly spent any time with our son, expected me to do everything around the house, which I didn't really mind, except that he complained terribly when it did was not up to his standards, rather than simply fixing things to his liking without complaining. For example, he complained to me about the sock lying on the floor, instead of just picking it up as he passed by. He didn't listen to anything I said, and I had a joke that when I wanted to end the conversation, I had to talk longer than 30 seconds because at that point he became very dismissive and literally walked away. He threatened to divorce me every time we fought. Eventually I asked him to stop, and he more or less did, but every now and then he lost his temper. His mother lived with us for years and was incredibly emotionally abusive in a way that I cannot and will never forgive, but every time I brought it up with my husband he became very defensive and defended her and said I was wrong when I felt like I did. The most painful thing was the fact that he did not work for a year of his own free will, and despite all his free time, he did not spend a single day with me and our son. Then I was convinced that he did not love me. And then I met another guy who initiated all this. We did a lot of soul-searching after that first big conversation. I went on a pre-planned trip to visit my family. It was one of those family trips that he never took with me, so he didn't have a ticket, so he didn't come. During our separation, we thought a lot about what we wanted from our marriage and from each other. Whether we were willing to work on anything. Whether we could repair the pain we had caused each other. We spent a lot of time in correspondence and on the phone. On the day I was supposed to return, we both walked around wondering if we really wanted to see each other again. We decided to stay together and make it happen. He has a better work-life balance and takes care of the house. I speak when something bothers me. We have conversations about things that are not related to work. He appreciates what I say. He apologized for the way his mom treated me and for not acknowledging how much it hurt which made me feel like a huge weight had been lifted off my spirit. He said he didn't even realize how he'd been behaving all these years, that he'd been behaving like someone he never wanted to be. I believe him. I always knew he had a good heart. I feel like his behavior now matches who he is inside. I didn't know our marriage could be as good as it is now. If I were, I would definitely have tried to have this conversation years ago, preferably without cheating. Sorry it was so long. Story 19. I'm and much more on the sapphic end of the spectrum than straight. However, I grew up in a very religious environment, and I grew up believing that I would go to hell for my attraction to women, 
so I spent a long time trying to prove to myself and the world that I was indeed straight. By the time I even admitted my attraction, I was married with two children. My husband was and is my best friend, but I was not in love with him. I wrote in my journal about wanting a divorce so I could be with women and explore my attraction and emotional attraction to women, and mostly so I wouldn't feel like I was living a lie. My husband had the one moment of a really big rush and he read that journal. We fought, argued, cried, and eventually agreed to try again as an open marriage. Then I could be with women and stay with him and he could see other women too. That was ten years ago, and now we have three children. From then on, I really fell in love with him. Only for me, falling in love turned out to be much more about emotion than passion, and it was a process that took years. Technically, we still have an open marriage, but neither of us exercise that prerogative anymore. I couldn't have asked for a better or happier relationship. Edit. Wording for clarity. Story 20. When I was three months pregnant, he gradually became a nightmare. We started going to family counseling, but it only got worse. It's like the therapist mentioned something about adding value to each other's lives, and my husband later said to me, I don't think you add any value to my life. That cow is deep. First, I told him, make up your mind. Either you will leave me completely or commit to me and stop mentioning, threatening, divorce. Problem? He decided to participate but had more personal issues, and a little later, I was the one who was ready to go. I refused to go back until he got into individual therapy. He's improved a lot, but not enough. You seem to feel better than before, but living with you is still hell. If you get a 3100 on a school test, then yes, you did better than the previous 12100, but you're still failing the class. Then suddenly, the child arrived at the hospital. While the baby was in the ICU, I convinced my husband to go to his therapy session anyway. I thought it was a stress reliever. I also convinced him to go to a play event while I was still in the hospital. He was great when I was in the hospital, bringing me food, driving me around, sleeping on the hospital bed. He just didn't handle the stress well. He came back and was easier. This therapy session was a group session and many of the men were separated from their children. I guess it was an eye-opener and then he just became a good dad and a good husband. He stepped it up. Is he perfect? No, of course not. He still struggles with the bad habits he's had all his life, just like me. But he is great. I think this is a rare case when the birth of a child fixed a relationship. I wonder if the constant employment was good for his mental health. He had previously quit his job and was completely aimless. I expected absolute hell and thought that being a single mother would be easier than taking care of a husband and a child at the same time. The opposite happened. He sells things online, does most of the housework and most of the kid work, and is now a better communicator than I am, more patient and reflective. Story 21. Almost exactly a year ago, my wife broke down in tears, panicked, saying she ruined our marriage. We were good friends with a family next door who even had children the same age as ours. For several weeks, the neighbor wrote to my wife everything he wanted to do to her. She told him no, but secretly enjoyed the attention and let him continue. One morning, he saw her in the gym and started kissing her neck after leaving, which she allowed to happen for a period of time. Eventually, she realized what she was doing, told him no, came home and confessed everything. It was a serious breach of trust for me. I hugged my son and left thinking that this was the last time we would be together as a family. We had two kids and I was working at a new job. Marriage is not easy when you add to it the stress of work and the constant attention that small children require. I learned that she had been experiencing the seven-year itch for several months. I noticed that things weren't right and suggested that she go to therapy or both of us. We ended up going on our own, but it didn't help much. My parents divorced when I was two, and I always wanted my children to have the kind of family life I didn't have. I was devastated and confused more than anything. For a while, I couldn't look at our family photo because it seemed like everything was fake. I came home and discussed it with her. I was very annoyed because her actions and thought process were incredibly immature, but at the end of the day, she didn't let it go where it wanted to go and came clean to me, which was very mature of her. She could let the lie continue if she wanted to. She even had to confess to the neighbor's wife, with whom she was very friendly. It disrupted our social life and we moved out of the home and neighborhood that my wife loved. I was ready to work it out and we went to therapy, which was very helpful. I think all newlyweds should go twice a month for a year. If we had done that, maybe we would have avoided what we went through years later. A year down the road, we live in another country and welcomed our last child. We communicate better than ever and are happy. 
It's still hard for me to hear her say she loves me and look at pictures of us having fun while she hid her emotional affair. Life is confusing and never white. Story 22. With me, it was as simple as quitting drinking. I drank half a bottle of whiskey every night. I didn't see what this bad person was nervous about. Then something happened, and I stopped drinking. Around the same time, almost all the problems with the girl seemed to clear up. I stopped being a drunk, unpleasant person, and she mysteriously stopped being an uptight bad person. It must have been some kind of coincidence. Story 23. I will be brief. We were young and had already started a family. We tried to be the perfect family and forgot to be ourselves. We did not love each other and tried to find love and fulfillment somewhere else. When the cow hit the fan, it was ready to stop, but I begged for another chance. He agreed at that time he had to move for two years to college. If he hadn't left, our marriage would have ended. We needed this space to find ourselves again and appreciate each other and our family. It's been four years since the reboot and we're still trying to do it. Story 24 we haven't quite gotten married yet, but we were planning to do it. We've been dating and living together for years. We just moved and gave our cats away due to a health scare. I worked nights and he worked days, so we rarely saw each other except at the end of our work days. He became very depressed and took it out on me. We fought every day over the smallest thing, but it meant the world to him. I hated going home because I knew we were going to fight but staying at friends meant we were going to fight too. At one point, he asked me to hide all the dangerous items in the house. I begged him to go to the free therapy his job offered. I tried everything, from persuasion, services, and crying. He finally gave up and the therapist gave him a letter to allow him to have an emotional support animal. Read, not the one you occupy, but it prevents apartments from evicting you for an animal unless they are aggressive, dangerous to other tenants. He didn't want to get a dog. The problems continued. I finally went to the shelter with a friend and found the perfect candidate. I went home and told him, and he told me he didn't want to. So I gave him the only ultimatum I've ever given, and still feel guilty that no one should give an ultimatum in a relationship. Either he went to look at the dog and try, or I took my things and left. I cried, told him how horrible he was, begged him to at least look at her. We got the dog. Her depression was greatly reduced within a week, and she is now his favorite place to look at when he comes home from work. She saved his life, and she's ruined by it. We got married and remained happy because she is in our lives. All because Ms. The Wigglebottoms give him the love and support he needs when I'm not around. Ofta. And she's going to have a special treat tonight after I've typed it all up. Story 25. I'm not sure if it was on the verge of divorce, but a few weeks after we got married, we had our first big fight. Hours of bickering, arguing, and I couldn't deal with it, so I took the dog for a walk. We walked around the apartment complex for several hours at about 2 a.m., and I said, that's it. We didn't even have time for a month. Eventually, I realize I'm cold and the dogs are tired, so I go back thinking it's bad and apologize and sleep on the couch or whatever. I'm coming back. The door is locked. I left without my keys and my phone. I knock. There is no answer. I sit on the stairs to regret things and try to think of something to do before morning. After a few minutes, the wife stops in the car, crying her eyes out. I thought you died. Why didn't you come back? And then I realize that I'm about 75% stupid. We are celebrating our two-year anniversary this weekend and just finished talking about The Good Place on Netflix. We highly recommend it. Story 26. My husband came home from Thailand in February and was downright cold. I knew something was wrong, but every... What's wrong? My question was rejected, and work was used as an excuse. Maybe I'm crazy, but a few days of this, and I just had enough and needed to know. I wrote everything down in a letter and gave it to him before going to bed. I knew he wasn't ready to talk, so I thought this was the best way to start the conversation. He let me stew about it without saying a word for 24 hours, until we sat down and he immediately brought up the divorce. I was completely shocked. This came out of left field. We are in an unhappy situation but I never thought it was an unhappiness between him and me. Something still didn't seem right. I went to use our old laptop to look for work. I was terrified of what was about to happen and tried to plan frantically. I opened Google Chrome and immediately got a million messages from another woman. They had met during my husband's recent work trip to Thailand for less than a month and were already talking about marriage and how much they loved each other. Of course, I immediately get mad at both of them, her for knowing he is a married father of two young children, and him for knowing how much I sacrificed for him during our five years together. Of course, 
At this moment, everything was the worst. He said some absolutely disgusting things to me in an attempt to push me away, and it worked. I returned to the U.S. with our children to try to figure out how to divorce him. Silly enough, I made a stupid decision after he told me she was gone for good, not by their own choice, but her family's, and I came home to go to counseling and see if we could change situation for the better. At this point, we are going home, and he is in the Philippines for a few more weeks due to work. He returns home, and nothing changes. I don't recognize him at the moment. The stupid man I once loved is cold, withdrawn, and treats me like dirt. In his messages, I found another Thai girl who also knew he was married, but he convinced her that he was going to break up with me. And then I found another girl, this one from the Philippines, who informed him about going there, where he stayed for a while. Merriment. The most unfortunate thing is that he did not refuse her and did not try to blow her away. That was my turning point. At this point, it's the end of May. I call him in tears of frustration and tell him he has two hours to get plane tickets for himself and two kids, or I'll go straight to someone bigger than him with proof. He acts confused and I immediately spill everything. Sobbing, suffocating, our children next to me cry with me. This was the point where he changed. He took consultations seriously. He independently arranged a new consultation, independently read the entire book Five Languages of Love, and came to me with a healthy discussion. He seemed genuinely sorry. I'm still trying to pick up my pieces and the pieces of our marriage as well. But now instead of having to deal with it myself, he's helping too. I'll never know what it was. Or maybe he's just scared of my insanity. But even after everything, I don't want anyone else. Story 27 what saved us was a little time and a lot of trial by fire. I would never, ever justify getting pregnant to save a marriage, but that's part of what helped us. We were getting divorced, both of us working hard trying to save up to buy a house. We never saw each other and stopped pursuing our common interests. I think we both felt neglected and unfulfilled. It got so bad that we went out together after I got home from a long work trip and I told him I was done. He convinced me to give him another one, we agreed to stop working as we had enough savings to start looking at houses. Within a week, we found the top of our dreams. Then, about a month after the weekend, we found out I was pregnant. With a baby on the way and a house to prepare, we were banned from working together as a team and were reminded why we worked so well together. Then childbirth became more difficult. I almost didn't make it. I spent the next year recovering from my injuries. He took excellent care of me and the baby. Again, we united. I fight for my health. He fights for us. Story 28. Really late for this conversation, but we both had short marriages to people with addiction problems before we met. Very much in love, but young, poor, and with many complex problems that we were not prepared to deal with. We struggled and had, at best, a very mediocre life together. Love did not cover him after several years. Around the age of 10, I was involved in a mass shooting. This event took all our little problems and questionable relationships and blew them up like a slow volcano. I really lost myself. Several years passed, but we broke up. We broke up for almost a year. There were many things that I won't talk about. But I will say that this year, I did nothing to improve this situation. My wife, however, stubbornly looked to the sky for what fragments of our life together she could. One day, Something good happened. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was a surprise, and I dialed my wife's number by heart to tell her. It's been so long since I've had any luck. We ended up talking for a bit, then again a few days later, and then she came to me with wine. It was about seven years ago. The road back was bumpy, but it was always better than the first half. I think it's almost perfect right now, and we wouldn't trade what we have for anything. Story 29. My husband and I met for five years before we got married. During that time, we quarreled a lot about one thing, his sister. He was her emotional husband and often manipulated him into thinking what she was doing was normal. She crashed my wedding party, took him to a strip club and gave him a lap dance for his 21st birthday, told me his dead mom would disappoint him in his choice of a match. Just to name a few, since we got married, I've grown a spine and I'm treating it to kicking and screaming therapy. After one session, the therapist told him that it was his job to hold his family back if they were disrespectful and mine was to hold mine back. I told him we have friends who are breaking up because he wouldn't listen to her when she asked for a family, and now she doesn't love him. I said I still love him, but if this continues, I won't, and I will go. I deserve better. A week later, his sister called complaining about our wedding, and he went to her house and said it was time to put me first. She cried and threatened him. 
He did not retreat. We survived deployments overseas and a baby and moved 1,000 miles. It was the best thing for our marriage. In April, we will celebrate 10 years. Story 30. Many reasons. I discuss everything. He hides things. We have two children and lack of money. I was miserable as a stay-at-home mom with no support to find a job. He was stressed at work. He didn't know me 